Though it is somewhat disputed these days, international football has long been considered the pinnacle of the game. It is often said that there is no prouder moment for a footballer than getting that phone call from a national team boss, pulling on that famous shirt for the first time, stepping out onto the hallowed turf of your country's home ground, and singing the national anthem. I'm getting pretty emotional just thinking about it. Though, at 25 and with 8 years without any 11 aside football under my belt, I suspect a phone call from Gareth isn't imminent for me. With all that having been said, it tends to be the creme de la creme who get that opportunity. Only those who have proven their class on the club stage tend to get the chance to represent their nation. And there are a large number of senior pros with impressive club CVs who never get that call. But are there any exceptions to this rule? Well, Callum hudson odoi made his first start for England at senior international level before making his first start for Chelsea in the Premier League in March 2019, though he had already made almost 20 appearances in all competitions. That's pretty impressive, but in today's video, we're going to go one step further and take a look at a number of players who made their senior international debuts before they had even made a single first team appearance at club level. Not possible, I hear you cry. Well, prepare to be surprised, and some of them will be pretty familiar names. Here are seven footballers who made their international debuts before registering a single first team appearance at club level. Harry Wilson. Given that we are still in the midst of Euro 2020, I thought I'd start with a player from this tournament, for a national team who have overachieved once again. I thought Wales were brilliant in the group stage, though I won't say anything else since I'm recording this video before their round of 16 tie with Denmark, but by the time you're watching this video, I'm sure you will know how that game went. I have said multiple times on this channel that I'm a big fan of Harry Wilson. I even picked him out as my most underrated player from the Wales squad at Euro 2020 in a recent video, and I think it would be a real waste if he wasn't playing Premier League football next season, now aged 24. A teenage prodigy, Wilson was born in Wrexham, but joined the Liverpool Academy at the age of 8. He first represented Wales on the international stage at the age of 16 in their under-17 team, scoring three goals in just three games. Wilson did enough in those three games to convince Chris Coleman that he was ready to make his senior debut, still aged only 16, though some cynics suggested the real reason Wales capped Wilson so early was because England had also expressed an interest in having the teenager represent them. Wilson made his senior debut in October 2013, coming on as a substitute in place of Hal robson Carnu in the 87th minute against Belgium. Upon his introduction, he took Gareth Bale's record as Wales' youngest ever debutant and Raheem Sterling's record as Liverpool's youngest ever international, at just 16 years and 207 days old. Wilson's debut earned his granddad a whopping £125,000 off a £50 bet that he had put on Wilson winning a cap for Wales back when he was just 18 months old. That's Harry Wilson, not the granddad of course. It took almost five years before he won his next cap for Wales at the 2018 China Cup under Ryan Giggs, and it would be almost two years before he ever actually played a game at club level, his club debut coming on loan with Crew Alexander in League One in September 2015. Wilson has now won 28 caps for Wales and made 144 club appearances, but a two-year gap between your first senior international debut and your first club start is pretty remarkable. Maurizio Isla Given that we started with a player at Euro 2020, it seemed only right to follow that up with someone who is currently starring at the Copa America. Maurizio Isla is a man many of you will be familiar with due to his time playing in Europe, where he spent a number of years with Udinese, followed by briefer stints at Juventus, Queen's Park Rangers and Marseille, among others. Following three years in Turkey with Fenerbahce, Isla returned to South America in 2020, joining Campeonato Brasileiro Giants Flamengo, where he won a Serie A title in his debut campaign. This is actually the first time that Isla has ever played professional football in South America, since he never made a first team appearance for his old club, Universidad Católica, in Chile, before being snapped up by Udinese in 2007, due to his impressive performances at the Under-20 World Cup. Former Chile turned Leeds United boss Marcelo Bielsa seemed to have been equally impressed, and unmoved by the fact that Isla had never actually played a competitive game of men's football before in his life, 
he handed him his senior international debut against Switzerland in September 2007, at the age of 19. It would be the first cap of many for Isla, who has now won 123 caps for Chile, putting him fourth in their all-time appearance charts. But he wouldn't make his senior club debut for another three months. That arrived in December 2007, when he came on as a substitute for Udinese against Palermo in the Coppa Italia. Isla went on to make just shy of 150 appearances for the Serie A side, and he is currently competing in his fifth Coppa America, having won the tournament in both 2015 and 2016. Alex Awobi A man who has scored just four goals in 65 games for Everton since joining the club for an initial £28 million, with the potential to rise to £34 million from Arsenal in 2019, Alex Awobi is something of an enigma. Born in Lagos, Iwobi's family left Nigeria when he was four years old, spending a brief period of time in Turkey before settling in the London borough of Newham. The nephew of Nigeria and Premier League legend JJ Okocha, Iwobi joined the Arsenal Academy as an eight-year-old. He was twice released by Arsenal at the age of 14 and then again at 16, but on both occasions, he was once again re-signed by the Gunners. Having represented England at under 16, 17 and 18 level, Awobi accepted a senior call-up from Nigeria in the autumn of 2015, before he had made a first-team appearance for Arsenal, or for anyone else for that matter. Aged 19, he came on against DR Congo in place of Ahmed Musa as Nigeria lost 2-0. Later that same month, just under three weeks later to be precise, Iwobi made his Arsenal debut, and his professional debut, starting in a humiliating 3-0 defeat for the Gunners against Sheffield Wednesday in the League Cup. It wasn't a great club and international debut in the space of three weeks for Iwobi, if we're being honest. Iwobi went on to make 149 appearances for Arsenal before his big money move to Everton, and he has won a grand total of 47 caps for the almighty Super Eagles, still aged only 25. Chris Economides. It seems like ages since I last talked about Australian on this channel, perhaps due to all the recent Euros coverage, so it's good to be able to include an Aussie in this 7, given the fact that a whopping 3% of all HITC7's views come from the land down under, making it the channel's fifth biggest national demographic, narrowly behind the Republic of Ireland. Chris Economides was born in Sydney, but as you can probably tell from his surname, he is of Greek descent. That meant Economides was eligible to represent either Greece or Australia, but he was quoted back in 2013, at the age of 18, as saying that he had turned down the Greek FA at 17 because he was determined to play for the Socceroos. If you're wondering why he was asked quite so young, well, that's because Economides, a bit like Harry Wilson, was something of a teenage superstar. When he was 17 years old, Economides moved to Italy to sign for Atalanta, where his fine form in the Serie A side's youth ranks saw him poached by Lazio. In March 2015, whilst Economides was still just an academy player at Lazio, recently appointed Celtic boss, and then Australia boss, Ange Postacoglu, called him up for games against Germany and North Macedonia, handing him his international debut against the latter. It took another nine months before Economides actually played his first game for Lazio, which came against St Etienne in the Europa League and that would end up being his first and his last appearance for the club. Following a string of low moves, the 26-year-old wide man, who can also play as a number 10, has been back in Australia since 2017, currently contracted to Perth Glory, and he has won 14 caps for Australia in total. Gabriel We couldn't go this entire seven without a single Brazilian, and thankfully, we haven't. Gabriel Vasconcelos Ferreira, better known as Gabriel, is likely to be a goalkeeper who is more familiar with Italian viewers than Brazilian ones, given the fact that he has played his club football in Italy since 2012. A regular for Brazil at youth team level, whilst contracted to Cruzeiro, Gabriel played 15 times for Brazil's under-20s and four times for the nation's under-23 team, though he never actually made a first-team appearance for Cruzeiro. Nonetheless, having impressed at the 2012 Olympics as a late replacement for the injured Rafael Cabral, Gabriel was signed by AC Milan as a third-choice goalkeeper. During the same summer, just three days after winning the Olympic final in fact, Gabriel won his first, and to date, his only cap for Brazil's senior team, 
starting in that game as Brazil won 3-0. Uncapped in the nine years since, Gabriel made his professional debut for AC Milan almost 10 months later in a Serie A tie against Udinese. Age 28, he now plays for Lecce in Serie B, who are losing playoff semi-finalists this season or last season, depending upon where you view it now. You'll notice in these videos that that is a routine problem that I struggle with. This season, last season, I think it's technically still this season. Moving swiftly on. Trevor Ford. There will be many small islands and low-ranked national teams with a vast number of players who have made their international debuts before playing a club game of any note at any decent or professional senior level. But of the more competitive, higher-ranked national teams, I doubt there is a country who has capped as many players as Wales before they have made a single first-team club appearance. Or at least, my research didn't throw up any nations who have done so as many times as them. Having already featured Harry Wilson, I could have included another current player like young Rabi Matondo, but I thought I'd go with more of a blast from the past and one of the greatest players to have ever been capped before playing a club game. That player, or former player I should say, is Welsh legend Trevor Ford, who was a goal-scoring machine from the end of World War II right through to the start of the 1960s. In total, Ford scored 232 goals in 432 official peacetime games, primarily for Aston Villa, Sunderland and Cardiff City, though he also spent three very impressive seasons in the Netherlands with PSV. Ford's first official international, preceding his first official club appearance, was a consequence of the war, which ended when Ford was in his early 20s. Once the war ended, Ford joined Swansea Town, as they were then, or Swansea City, as they may be better known to you now, where he scored 9 goals in 16 games in half a season, before joining first division side Aston Villa. Before he made his peacetime debut for the Swans, however, Ford played in Wales' first competitive post-war fixture, a 3-1 win against Scotland in the British Home Championships, in which he scored their second goal. Ford went on to score 23 goals from 38 caps for the Dragons. Javier Mascherano Argentina's all-time joint record appearance holder at the time of this recording, though he will almost certainly be second to Lionel Messi outright by the time this video comes out, Javier Mascherano was one of the greatest players of my lifetime in terms of the job he did in his prime. Though Pep Guardiola later found a very happy home from its centre-back, where Mascherano did an outstanding job at Barcelona, it was his terrier-like determination and fantastic anticipation when shielding a back four that saw him turn in his finest performances, at least as far as I'm concerned. Mascherano was born in San Lorenzo and came through the youth ranks at River Plate, but it was with the impressive Argentina under-20 team that he really made his name, both at home and abroad. Mascherano made 22 appearances for Argentina's under-20 team, winning the Best Player Award at the Toulon Tournament, as well as being Argentina's star man at the 2003 FIFA World Youth Championships, as they were then known. That prompted a call-up to the senior team before Mascherano had even played a single minute of first-team football for River Plate. His international debut came against Uruguay in July 2003, and the following season, Mascherano did enjoy a breakout campaign in Buenos Aires. At club level, Mascherano famously, or infamously, went on to sign for Corinthians and then West Ham, where Alan Pardew seemingly didn't think that he was quite as good as Hammers midfielder Hayden Mullins. Mascherano went on to star for Liverpool before winning it all at Barcelona, in addition to winning 147 caps for Argentina. That Hayden Mullins must have been one hell of a player. So that is it for today's video. Thank you to uh, subscriber, the one, the only, who sent this idea in on many occasions before I finally made it. And thank you to all of you, as ever, for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. Oh, and you can also find me on either Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you feel so inclined.